Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. This is Omar and today we're going to be talking about research. Now you might be a match applicant, you might be a med student considering applying to the match in next year or in the coming years and you might be asking yourself, is research important? Should I do research? How much time should I commit to doing research? And publications, what about publications? What about abstracts and posters and research experiences in the US? Do I really need to go to the US to do research to get publications? I'm here to answer these questions for you. I'm going to take you guys through why research is important, how to find US research experience, how to publish, and I'll discuss a possible opportunity for you guys to research with me. So without any further delay, let's get started. Now you may ask, is research important in the match? Short answer, yes. Long answer, yes. Now there are many reasons for that. Um, let's take a few and try to understand why it's like that. First of all, research has pretty significant value when it comes to uh, medical education, academic uh, medicine. Uh, uh, there are far reaching benefits of um, a certain staff member, faculty member who is actively involved in research and academics and it benefits institutions as a whole. Uh, institutions like people who um, you know, are involved in research because that, first of all, you know, contributes to their research output. It contributes to their academic uh, reputation and in the long run just improves the academic outlook when it comes to research and uh, education. Second point, with step one becoming pass-fail, it was well understood that the other aspects of a person's application would become more important. You know, this included the clinical electives, volunteering experience, research experience in publications, and there was a, a bigger motivation, bigger incentive for programs to holistically review applications. And uh, that meant that programs started looking uh, at other things in a person's application beyond the scores. And I think it's a positive change. Um, so especially if you are aiming for top academic programs, you can be assured that they will be you know, interested in looking at your research output and your academic involvement and scholarly output. Third point, if you are considering to do a fellowship in the future, um, for example, especially some of the more competitive specialties like cardiology, gastro, any research you do, even right now, even during your residency, in that specialty will be looked at and, and will add value to your fellowship application. So, I mean, it's amazing how, you know, you may start research early, but it has far reaching benefits, you know, and that includes even in your fellowship application. It's natural because, you know, one of the ways to support your interest in a certain specialty is showing research output. And obviously programs want to look at that and it's very known of, you know, cardiology, gastro and such specialties that if you are considering any of those specialties, you should be starting early uh, with regards to, you know, research and publications. Now to objectively look at why research is important, I'm going to take you guys through some data from the NRMP, the National Residency Matching Program. These are the people who actually, you know, oversee the whole matching uh, situation. Um, and every year they, they release data and information on their website. I can include the website in the description for you guys. I would highly recommend you guys to go through it and kind of get an understanding of what the qualities, what the uh, characteristics of the applicants were matched and unmatched, you know, uh, last year and the previous years. So as you can see here, uh, we are looking at table two. This was a summary statistics uh, table, kind of like um, statistics from the overall match, you know, not specific for any uh, specialty. So if you see here, mean number of research experiences was for US IMGs and non US IMGs. For non US IMGs, those who matched, the mean was 2.5 research experiences. That obviously means, you know, there were people who had more than this, there were people who had less than this. This is really the, the middle point, 2.5. And those who didn't match had 2.6. Uh, now, obviously, you know, there are a lot of different factors that um, come into play here when you talk about matched and non-matched. This could have 100 explanations. One of them could be the unmatched people who had a slightly more a higher mean of research experiences. Maybe they took a gap year or two gap years or three gap years, um, you know, to do those research experiences. And obviously, as we know, 
uh, gap years, especially a large number of gap years, does have an impact on um, you know matching. So that's just one of the many explanations we can come up with. But you know, to focus on this here, this was the main number of research experiences that uh, you know uh, applicants had. When talking about abstracts, presentations, and publications, you see how this is separate from the research experiences. Abstracts, presentations, and publications. For the matched people, it was 6.6. .6. For the unmatched, it was 7. Now, another explanation for this could be maybe someone who went unmatched try to compensate or try to improve their application by taking a research year and you know working on more research, working on publications and stuff you know, as a means to improve their application. So maybe that is what is that is what's reflected in the ho slightly higher mean number of you know research experiences and abstracts publications and so on. Now, if you want um, you know specialty specific data, that's also there in the same booklet in chart eight. This one is for the research experiences. Uh, this is for the US IMGs and non US IMGs. And as you can see, this will give you a breakdown of what, we, what it was like for the different specialties. It would be nice for you to kind of look at where your specialty stands and how you compare with the mean, with the average uh, for that specialty. Um, as you can see, no one can go into applying to orthopedic surgery with one or two publications expecting um, to have a very successful match as, because as you can see the the mean number of research experiences for people who matched in orthopedic surgery was 14.8 that's actually insane when you compare it to the other specialties like you know family medicine internal medicine and so on now looking at the mean number of abstracts presentations and publications by IMGs this again gives you a specialty specific idea and you can already see what a massive difference there is in different special between different specialties like here's neurosurgery 60.8 mean number of abstracts presentations and publications versus internal medicine where it was 5.1 and keeping in mind, again, this was a mean. There were people more, uh, who had more than this. There were people who had less than this. Now, you need to understand research experience is different than publications, abstracts, and posters when it comes to your ERAS application. We need to understand this here. Obviously, all these things that I mentioned, publications and abstracts and posters, will come out of research experiences. But when it comes to ERAS, the most attractive the most interesting research experiences programs are looking for is u.s research experiences you know research programs you might have been part of as a research trainee as a research intern research scholar you know whatever you may call it research fellow in the u.s i think that has the greatest value when it comes to your eras application and those quite often depending on the duration of these programs um lead to publications, they lead to abstracts and poster presentations. Now, you know, take my example. I w did research at Columbia in 2016, at Mayo 2017, but both were summer research uh, experiences, very short, you know, both were like roughly five, six weeks. And that wasn't enough time for me to get a publication out of those. They still counted as research experiences in my ERAS application. Um, and although I didn't get any uh, publications out of those I got a poster presentation from my Mayo experience my Mayo research experience and so that counted as a poster uh, presentation and in fact that poster was published as an abstract in uh, a physiology journal so from that one research experience I got a poster and I got an abstract that was published so you know this is the beauty of um, getting involved in U US research experiences particularly because even if they don't lead to a publication, which is generally considered the best outcome, you know, it's the, the best kind of result um, you can get from any research involvement. But it, that's not it. You know, you can get abstracts, you can get poster presentations and all these things count towards your application. And believe me, these are also equally important when it comes to your fellowship uh, application. They will want to see if you've been, if I'm applying to cardiology, they'd want to see if I've been going to um, you know, cardiology conferences and presenting my work, uh, you know, my research work as posters and so on. And all that contributes to my application. So you, you want to keep that in mind. So again, you don't need U.S. research experiences to get publications. 
but you can get publications and posters and abstract from US research experiences. Having said that, that means that you can get publications, you can get abstracts, you can get posters in your home country, in your med school, in the hospital affiliated to your med school. All these things can be achieved there and I'm sure people back in your country at your med school and hospital are publishing pretty much the same journals that people in big uh, institutions in the US are publishing. Lancet, NEGM, you know, everyone is free to publish in those journals. So. When it comes to publications, you don't need a U.S. research experience. You can get publications back home. So that's important to understand. So when someone is thinking about applying to a U.S. research experience, just keep that in mind. The experience will be good. It will add to your application, but you don't need it to get publications because you can get publications back home. Now the big question, how to find U.S. research experience? What do I do to find U.S. research experience? The best case scenario would be if your med school has collaborations with um, laboratories, labs, and institutions in the US, like my med school did. And I think that was very beneficial because that really helped the students at least jump beyond that uh, step, that difficult step of actually finding research experience, you know, finding uh, someone to uh, host you as a research trainee. You know, it's always challenging. So that helped a lot. So I think, you know, the approach should be thinking long term, thinking for you and thinking for your juniors and the generations to come. So try to work on that. Try to uh, encourage your med schools to kind of reach out to institutions outside uh, through their contacts, through, through their networks and try to establish those agreements so you guys can benef benefit from these research experiences. You know, it makes it much easier basically to uh, go through these programs and, you know, get some U.S. research experience. So if you guys don't have that in place, that is okay. Uh, there are plenty of people who find research experiences in the US by themselves. Um, and the most common way is by emailing, mass emailing. And, you know, honestly, I wish there was a more uh, convenient way uh, around this, but that is really the, the, the main way people are able to find US experience by mass emailing a lot of different PIs, a lot of different um, researchers, you know, in different institutions. If they have certain institutions in mind, they reach out to people there and send emails, you know, attach your CV, express interest in researching at their, uh, at their lab, showing interest in the project they're working on. Uh, if you're a match applicant, you, you want to fill that gap between, you know, applying for the match throughout the interview season, up until you match or even up until you start residency. Mention those things, mention your visa status, you know, are you in the US already and so on. And how do you find the contact details of such people uh, if you want to email them? Well, there are a few ways. Let's discuss them. The first one is by checking out the lab website through the institution's website. So for example, let's say if you're interested in a lab in Mayo Clinic, you would want to go to the research website of the Mayo Clinic. Uh, where all the labs are listed and then go to the specific lab, open it up and usually they have, you know, contact details mentioned there. So that's one way. Let me give you a quick demonstration. So for example, if you see here, I Google search Mayo Clinic Cardiovascular Research and here is the website to the Cardiovascular Research Center. You know, you find a lot of information here. It talks about all the different studies and the different labs and different research programs that they have going on. and you know, more information here. So if you choose research programs, you know, it's gonna give you all the different programs and let's say, you know, a list of the research faculty, laboratories, let's say we wanna go and look for a lab. So, you know, here it basically lists all the different labs. Um, if I go to C, there are a few cardiovascular, you know, research labs here that are listed. Um, for example, I am interested in the cardiovascular contractility and signaling. Uh, research going on and here is the researcher and his email and publications and you can very easily contact uh, the lab you know through this way now if you weren't able to find the contact of the certain lab or the individual this way there's another way uh, through which you can find the contact of the person you're looking for 
Now, the other way to find contact details of a certain researcher or a person is PubMed. I'm going to try and look myself up here. So I've done that and I believe I was a corresponding author on this paper. Uh, I'm going to click on that and let's see if I can find my email address. I've opened the website for the paper. As you can see, it shows an envelope next to my name. And there, when I clicked that, it opened a new window um, of Outlook with my email. Now, the screen recorder was set to this screen, so it wasn't able to show that. But, you know, this is really the process that you could use to get um, the email. ResearchGate is another way through which you can contact researchers. So ResearchGate is this website where, you know, researchers and people share their publications, their research output, and it's just a nice platform you know to collaborate and to reach out to people involved in research so that's another uh, option uh, you know you can use to connect with researchers i want to wrap this video up by touching on the point of collaboration and working together and teamwork when it comes to research research is meant to be something that people work on together and everyone benefits from the project and something that everyone contributes to so you know Research is just one of the many ways through which we all can support each other in the same journey. Um, I realize that, and obviously there are always research opportunities that you know come by, and quite often, for example, I sometimes find myself tired on time because of my other commitments. Where I would appreciate you know support uh, from other people, you know something we can work on together, and that can really help boost your publication output you know when you work together you work with other people you're benefiting yourself and you're benefiting everyone else but as i said there is no room for uh taking advantage of uh, such a system where people eventually uh, are added to the authors without having done anything i think that's inappropriate and that should not happen but that should not um you know come in the way of people working together and contributing and actually working hard to you know uh published together and at the end of the day as i mentioned it should be an enjoyable experience don't force yourself to uh, publish you know it should be quality over quantity um, you know once you've gotten those few publications you need to successfully match um, so keeping that in mind um, i realized that i would want to open this uh, opportunity to all of you guys all of you guys watching i am adding a google survey link to my description um, i would want to connect with you guys see what you guys have worked on and should any research opportunities come up i would love to work with you sometimes you know uh, there is a need for statistical uh, analysis assistance uh, in research projects sometimes there is a need uh, for people to collect data there's need for people to um, uh, write manuscripts and you know i understand that you guys are all very talented and have very unique skills and I think it's something that we all can benefit from. So should any research projects come up, fill in the survey and I'll definitely keep you guys updated. With that, we come to the end of this video. I again thank you guys for your support and all the positive messages about you guys finding the content beneficial. But that doesn't mean there is no room for improvement. I'm always trying to find ways to improve this. Give me feedback. Tell me how I'm doing and, you know, tell me what you think about the content. I apologize if some of the videos have been long, but, you know, in my defense, I want to lean on the side of giving more detail than you know leaving something important out so that's really been my mindset so let me know if you guys think my approach should be to make the videos generally shorter um you know potentially more condensed and less informative um you know there is definitely pros and cons for either approach so you know feel free to let me know and again thank you so much for your support please don't forget to like subscribe and share with your colleagues and let me know in the comments what you thought about this and if you actually tried my approaches and if you were able to successfully find the person or the researcher you were looking for. With that said, you guys take care, stay safe, and I'll see you guys very soon.